welcome back everybody. We are going to talk here about probably almost certainly the most common rheumatologic disorder that you're going to run into in your practice and that is osteoarthritis. Um, it is super super common. It's more common than RA, more common than lupus by a long shot. So you want to understand how to manage this and fortunately it is pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna, we're going to run through this and I'm going to show you some pictures and by the time we're done with this, you should know everything you're going to need to know uh, for osteoarthritis as a primary care physician, internal medicine, what have you. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or in the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And certainly feel free to subscribe to my channel and you will get notifications as I put more and more videos up. Alright, so what is osteoarthritis? It is a non-inflammatory uh, probably not idiopathic, although in some cases it can be, degenerative joint disease. So it's non-inflammatory and it's degenerative. It's also chronic, so you live with it for, once you get it, you're pretty much living with it the rest of your life. And it is progressive. It can get worse absent any kind of therapy. It is closely relating, related to the aging process. So as you get older, you're more and more likely to develop this. And the reason is because this is really an overuse injury. Over the course of a long period of time, we're going to see that the joints that are affected by osteoarthritis tend to be the joints that we use the most, either as stabilizing joints, uh, weight-bearing joints, or just joints that we use frequently, like the fingers, for instance. Uh, so it most commonly affects the joints of the hands and then weight-bearing joints like the knees and the hips. Um, interestingly enough, the ankles are not affected too much, and that is because of the way that they're designed. They're just very, very, very strong joints. Uh, it does affect over 20 million people in the United States, so that is a lot of people. So I like to use the slice mnemonic when I'm categorizing arthritis. If somebody comes in with arthritis, so first look for systemic signs. Osteoarthritis, they will not have those. Uh, location, what kind of joints are affected. So look for uh, the hands, especially the wrists and the fingers. Um, look for weight-bearing joints like the hips and knees, and it is not necessarily symmetrical, however it can be. That doesn't really tell you a whole lot. As far as inflammation, you're not going to have external inf inflammation. You're not going to have that redness and warmth that you would see in septic arthritis or gout or even RA. Uh, with, as far as chronicity, it is chronic and progressive. It doesn't really go away. It may be a little bit worse in the morning um, and then gets better and then gets progressively worse as the day goes on. All right, so that's kind of classic with overuse injuries. I do not want you to fall in the trap of thinking that every joint pain that hurts in the morning and then gets better is inflammatory or RA. Um, so what you'll see is that um, in the morning there'll be stiffness, but it tends to be less than 30 minutes, okay? Whereas in RA and lupus and inflammatory joint uh, disorders, it, that morning stiffness lasts much longer. And then evidence of trauma, uh, osteoarthritis can be worsened if a joint is uh, traumatized. So look for joint pain as the presenting complaint. Patients tend to be older. Uh, they tend to be overweight, puts more stress on the joints. They may have repetitive joint work. Um, so think maybe uh, somebody who is a long-term runner, does long-distance running. They've done it for 30 years. Yes, you can get osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, think of maybe a secretary who is spending a lot of time typing, okay, using those, uh, those hand joints. And then uh, an absence of constitutional features. That's going to be really important to distinguish this from things like RA, although the age is going to tell you a lot as well. On physical exam, pretty much everything appears normal. However, there may be a decreased range of motion due to pain. You may appreciate crepitus if it's particularly severe. And then there's these nodes that you can see as well. Best initial diagnostic step is going to be an x-ray of the affected joints. And of course, we're generally talking about hips and knees. Um, the typical finding that you'll see is a reduction in joint space. And I'll show you a picture of that. Any labs that you get should be normal. So our workup, we're going to get an x-ray of the affected joint. You should also get a CBC, uh, sed rate, looking for inflammation. With any 
joint pain presenting for the first time, it doesn't hurt to get an RF, and then you may get other uh, labs depending on the presentation. This is a normal knee x-ray. So what I want you to look at here is this nice, confluent, almost parallel joint space that you see uh, here in the knee. And you can see here um, that there is a uh, loss of joint space. And then here you also see some uh, bone spurs as well as the uh, loss of joint space. Um, so look for that narrowing of joint space and osteophytes. So here you can see in the same patient the progression of osteoarthritis uh, starting out with the normal joint space and then gradually you get a narrowing of the space and destruction of the surrounding bone. Here's a normal hip x-ray. So again, notice here this nice parallel uh, uh, space in between the, uh, in the joint. Um, so here you can see uh, this is just on one side. So on the patient's left, you can see it's fairly normal looking, okay? But here on the right, um, you can see uh, destruction of the surrounding bone, uh, loss of joint space, um, inflammation. And remember, this is not an inflammatory arthritis, but you can get some mild inflammation, okay? So it is not inflammatory in etiology, but you can have some inflammation uh, in, in the synovial fluid and the surrounding tissue. Um, so here again, you see this is more mild, but a loss of joint space. And then here we have a mildly constipated patient who has it on both sides. Here's a normal hand x-ray. And this is what we would see in osteoarthritis, okay? So again, loss of joint space. Uh, these are Hubbardin's and Bouchard's nodes. Um, these are bony nodes. So um, they're different from, from rheumatoid nodules, which are gonna feel like a firm cyst. These are bony. Okay, and the names, Hubbardin and Bouchard, are just random, uh, but they refer to respectively the distal interphalangeal joints and the proximal interphalangeal joints. So the mainstay of treatment is NSAIDs. Um, really, no one is better than the other. Uh, however, remember that um, a lot of these patients are going to have um, not necessarily contraindications, but cautions for using NSAIDs. So you may have a patient with reflux disease, you may have a patient with gastritis, you may have a patient with congestive heart failure. And uh, these NSAIDs, when you're taking them long term, can be really hard on those organs. So you've got to be careful. Avoid COX-2 inhibitors in patients with a heart disease history. Uh, you can add omeprazole or something like that for gastric protection uh, if you're using long-term NSAIDs. Topical capsaicin may be useful, but it is inferior to NSAIDs. Then our second line, if NSAIDs are not enough, would be to add on something like duloxetine or tramadol. And then beyond that, you can look at intraarticular injections and then finally joint replacement. Things like exercise, weight loss, splinting, PTOT, um, other adjunctive strategies are, uh, are, are useful as well, but remember that NSAIDs are the cornerstone of management. So if I'm writing up orders, I'm going to say take an NSAID, try to lose some weight, get some regular exercise, maybe with a physical trainer, uh, with, a, um, with a physical therapist, uh, low intensity uh, exercises, okay? And then I would uh, refer them to physical therapy.